over the weekend I was running errands and I ran into this girl that I used to be very close with growing up, more so in middle school and a little bit in high school, and when college came we drifted apart. But from what I've known, she's had a boyfriend for years now. So I asked her about him and she started telling me immediately about their breakup. And apparently they've been broken up for near a month now, almost a month. So she was telling me all about the breakup, everything that happened, and she was really venting to me because she was telling me that she didn't know how to move on. Now, mind you, they've been dating for years, so I said to her, you know, that's normal that you're not moved on yet. And so she says to me at one point, she says, what do you think I should do, though? Because I feel like you were always good at letting go of situations. And when she said this to me, I stopped, and I thought it was weird because she's not the only one who has said that to me before. It's strange because everything that I said to her, basically, I'm going to tell you in this video, but what I will say is that when I got home, I was looking at an old diary I had. And I was looking at this diary specifically because I knew that it was around the time that she would have known about any relationship I was in. And in one of the diary entries, right in the middle, it says, I know that this isn't supposed to hurt this bad. So here's the thing about detachment. When we want to detach from feelings, like when we want to detach from a situation, really what we are saying is that we don't want it to feel as bad as it feels. We don't want it to feel as intense. We don't want it to be affecting us as much. When you try to suppress your feelings, you really just don't want them to surface because you know that there's more that you're not looking at. Subconsciously, I think that more often than we want to admit, that's what we are trying to prevent from happening we fail to really look at why we are feeling what we are feeling. So when we do this and we try to push the feeling down, we actually give it potential to really affect us when that's what we were trying to avoid doing in the first place. It's not that you don't want to have your feelings. That is not going to happen. You want to detach from things that you cannot control. You cannot control your feelings. What you can control though, is how you look at yourself. And that's why we fail to look at ourselves because it's very easy. Our eyes, we look at other things all day long. We don't sit there looking in the mirror all day long. We fail to look at ourselves. It is very easy because we literally are doing it all the time. It's very easy to look at everything outside of us, to give us validation, to give us definition. Let that frame the way that we see ourselves, the way that we see reality. In order to detach from your feelings, you know, it's like the only way out is through. You need to feel your feelings. You need to let them come up. You need to express them. You need to allow it to pass. When you don't allow that, and when you are doing everything that you can in order to not go through that, you're delaying the process. And not only that, it's getting stored so deep down inside of you. What's gonna end up happening is exactly what you wanted to avoid from happening in the first place, which is affecting you, which is changing you. You know, what she was saying to me was that she's home and she's just looking at his Instagram all day and she's looking at this and that. The person that I was dating at the time that I was closer with her, we were younger and that was one of like the hardest, longest breakups that I have gone through. And, you know, she, cause she was laughing and she said to me, I remember when I would say to her, like, or I would say to my friends, just tell me if you see anything, I'm not looking anymore. It's like you just get very tired of things outside of your actual control taking a toll on you. Over time, I stopped doing that. And what I've honestly realized is that I will sit there and cry my eyes out in bed before I even think about looking at someone's page because that isn't going to change what I'm feeling. I also noticed that over time, it's like when these things come into our life and they, you know, they don't work out, you, you really come to terms with the fact that you are scared of that continuing to have so much control over you. It's very unstable. It's not a stable way to live, to be, or to be in relationships. It's really not. An event that could take place in two seconds could break down who you are as a person. 
But a lot of the time, we really aren't even being real with ourselves about who we are as a person. You can't detach from feelings. You want to detach your identity, how you identify yourself with these feelings. That's what you want to detach from. And it's like, you know, you hear about people say like to look at yourself and it sounds so, you know, it sounds like bad. Like it sounds like so harsh, but you only think that until you do it. It's like, because no matter what, like once you do the inner work and you look at yourself, it's like every relationship that you have after that or like every breakup that you have after that, when, even when that person really does something to you, like let's say that person is truly the problem, they're wrong. It's like, you're not trying to detach from that person. You're well aware of what they did and you're also well aware that it doesn't define you. So it's like you allow it to come up and you don't internalize. And so even when someone hurts you, it's not difficult for you to let go of that person and they hurt you. It's diff you know that it's that your feelings are difficult and you know that what they did to you wasn't right, but you are not actually letting it change your self-esteem and your self-concept, your self-image and how you live your life. You're not letting that change because you are aware of the fact that what they did, it has nothing to do with what is inside. So it's like when people actually do the inner work, like they don't get offended when people tell them to do that because they understand what like is being said to them, why that's being suggested to them. Like that person won't really even be seeking to let go. Like they actually know that it's not that they have to let go. It's just that, you know, what happened happened and this is what I feel and that's it. The more that you allow this person to determine how you feel, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about life, how you feel when you wake up in the morning, the more you allow that, you know that's when yourself is slipping away. You understand that that is when you are losing yourself. When we don't understand what's going on, we don't understand how to handle it. That's why you're having trouble moving on because you're not really looking at what is happening. You're not looking at the full picture of things. People can only meet us as far as they've met themselves and vice versa. You know, it's like when you are so attached to something and when you are really struggling to let go of this person, to forget about this person, it's because you don't even know how to approach it. You're like not aware of what you're walking into. When you get into the habit of looking more at yourself, it's not an easy thing to do. We don't want to do it a lot of the time because it's difficult, it's confusing. It disorients us, that's how it feels. It disorients us from our reality. It disorients us from who we are. That's not the case. When you look inside, when you really truly like meet yourself full way, it actually reorients you. It actually doesn't disorient you. What you're really actually doing is being reoriented back to yourself. You're not being disoriented. It's not, it, it feels confusing at first because you were not consciously aware. Like me speaking right now, like, you know, up until now, my brain, the part of me that is speaking was not aware of these things. But that's why you feel triggered consciously because it, you know, it again, it feels very confusing. It's unsettling. But by doing this, by really understanding yourself, you not only change the type of people that you're going to attract into your life, you also change the way you show up for them. That, that's why you attract different people into your life. Because you have come to meet yourself so far, you actually become more vulnerable. When you become more open in your relationships, you become more open with who you are, with what you want. So you come to terms with all these traits that were conditioned, that you were conditioned to do, to be, one way or another, whether they were good or whether they were bad, you understand that it was not you, it was not natural. So over time, uh, you know, as we grow up, we prioritize these relationships over ourselves. The more you do that, the more you lose yourself. And that's why it's not natural. When you are forcing something for so long, over time, you allow that 
to control your actions because you're putting too much pressure on yourself to maintain these relationships, to stay with these people. You're putting too much pressure on yourself to maintain it. So over time, what that does is it also conditions your actions. It changes your actions. It changes you. And when we were younger, we were not aware of this taking place. So, you know, when we get older, a lot of the times we're unable to let go. These relationships also didn't work out because there's something more that we're not seeing. We're not really in touch with ourselves. So when you do the work and you look at yourself, you're able to accept that you are okay with something maybe not lasting forever because you trust yourself because you know that it's not going to make or break you. It's going to hurt. You're not going to prevent the emotions from coming up, but you're comfortable with those emotions coming up because you trust yourself to handle them. You are able to really acknowledge and feel the feeling because you're secure in it. You are secure with yourself being able to feel that way without changing because you are yourself, because that is you. No matter what, when this person leaves, your sense of self does not leave with them because you are aware of who you are no matter what. When you don't do this, over time, you're going to find that you are not aware of why you are attracting these people into your life. You become very unaware of why it's not working out. When you do the inner work and you come across these situations or things happen that are not so favorable, you're actually like even though it could happen and you accept that it could happen you're actually less prone to even becoming involved with situations that are not in your favor with things that don't align with you and that is because you also become aware of other people's wounds you become very aware of the whole spectrum of things you really open your eyes as to when other people are projecting things onto you, when other people are not handling things well with you because they haven't handled things well with themselves yet. So that's why I say people are only gonna meet you as far as, they, as, far as they've met themselves because like everyone has always said to me, oh, you're so good at letting go of things. No, it's not that. Sometimes, yes, more than others, maybe that was the case. But especially when she knew me, that relationship wasn't easy to get over it. I will say that when I was younger, I was very aware of the fact that these breakups hurt more than they should be. And a lot of the time, you actually don't realize what is affecting you. Like I'll tell you things that I've uncovered, but what I'm gonna say is that other people thought that I was good at letting go of it because I didn't meet myself full way to even be able to express my feelings to other people. So you could be sitting here and thinking that someone is totally okay with breaking up with you and they could even move on and be with someone else right after you. What you have to understand is that person, you know, it's like, I hate to say it this way, but they're basically exposing what is wrong with them in a way. You don't know exactly where it came from but you can tell that this person is just not okay with expressing themselves, with letting themselves be alone, with letting them feel what they are feeling after breaking up with you. And also when people disrespect you, they're so dissociated from themselves that when they disrespect you, when they mistreat you, they are projecting things onto you. The people do not get into relationships with people to hurt them, to disrespect them. When they do that, you are able to see that and know that that is not something you want anything to do with. So that is why as you heal, as you go within, you find that you attract less toxic people into your life because you're too aware that things like that are not natural, that things like that, you're not attracted to that. This is what I'll tell you. Okay, growing up, like, I'm sorry my parents are seeing this, but they were strict with me. They were very, very strict with me. Parents did the best that they could they were my age when they had me, meaning they were like 26, 27. I was their first daughter. They were afraid of anything happening to me. They used to invade my privacy. They used to look at, you know, my messages. They used to look at my journals. So when I was doing this work, what I uncovered was I feel like no one else ever cares about my feelings. No one else ever respects my boundaries, my feelings, because that's what I felt when I was younger. 
I was not even aware of that. So this is, but when I uncovered that, it was relieving, it was surprising. It, it might not always be as bad as you think that it might be. It also could be a lot more subtle. So now I'm able to see when people are not caring about my feelings, I know that that is going to trigger me. And perhaps I will not get involved with people like that because I'm well aware that that was something that I was attracting into my life that I was accepting because it was normal to me. Now I would not accept that into my life because now I know that that is not normal. But I also don't necessarily blame my parents. Like I'm able to look at it and think, you know, what it is what it is. Like parents will do what parents will do and they're not going to always be perfect. It wasn't easy dealing with that growing up. A lot of my friends did not have to deal with that. I did. So when you uncover these things, like with me, it's like now if someone does that to me, I'm not going to try to make excuses for it. I'm not going to normalize it. I'm not going to think that it's something that I have to accept into my life because I'm aware that growing up, that was maybe something that was normal, like with my parents, but like that's not the case now. Like I don't have to make excuses for that now. I don't have to let that into my life now. But had I not known that, I would have kept allowing that. I would have kept thinking that that is just like an acceptable dynamic to exist within relationships, but that's not the case. Maybe that's an acceptable dynamic, or maybe it's more acceptable with parents doing to their child, but that is by no means something that I need to allow in my relationships. That is not something that I have to make myself okay with. That is not something that I deserve. Just because my parents did that to me, that's not something I deserve. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I'm able to look at my parents though and think, I mean, you know, when I have a kid, I might be neurotic. Like, I, I can't deny that. But that does not mean that in my relationships, in my interpersonal relationships, that that is behavior that I need to actually give someone the permission to do. But the thing is, when people are treating you a certain way, you have to understand that they're not even aware of what they are doing because they did not go within themselves. When people move on from you right after a breakup, that is very telling. When they do things right after a breakup that makes you feel like they don't care about you, you have to accept that you can't change that because they don't wanna change that. They don't wanna look at themselves. They don't want to look in the mirror. There's something missing there, but that is not your problem. Time heals all. When I was looking at these entries, these journal entries I wrote, I sounded very upset. I was really upset. I don't actually know when I woke up and felt like I moved on from this person. I, I can't really tell you when it stopped, when it got better. It just did. And like I said, it was a long relationship. It's like a hard breakup and the person lived near me. They knew mutual people. It wasn't easy. And so when we hear that time heals all, really it's because time brings experience and experience brings knowledge and knowledge is what is going to bring you detachment from the situation. Knowledge is what is going to heal you from the situation, but gaining knowledge requires patience and patience comes with time. When you have patience, you're able to sustain yourself over longer periods of time to come to an, some outcome, to achieve some outcome that you want. If you want to heal, you need to accept that you need to give it time. You need to focus on yourself. You need to spend that time wisely. By spending that time wisely, your attention can't be focused outward. First, you need to focus it inward. And that's why it's difficult because it, you, it requires discipline. It requires discipline of you to look at yourself because it's not easy initially, but what comes of it after only benefits you. It only heals you. It only opens your eyes. It only makes you aware of things that were hurting you pretty much for no reason. Things you didn't have to really allow into your life for any reason. It's good to learn about it. It's good to uncover it. It doesn't necessarily feel good though in the beginning, but with time, once you allow that process to unfold and once you really lean into what is really truly hurting you, 
deep down, the process of healing and the process of moving on from things and the process of becoming stronger during breakups, that's when that's gonna happen. As long as you keep focusing your attention outward, you are not allowing it to happen. When you get more in touch with yourself and you lean more into yourself and who you are over time, it's gonna benefit you, but it's gonna benefit you because you're going to be more expecting of really what is aligned with you. You're not walking around blind pretty much because when you don't go in yourself and you don't look at yourself and you don't really reflect on what is going on, again, you're walking around blind. You might think that you're seeing everything outside of you, but you're not seeing it for what it really is. You're not seeing it for something that you actually don't have to deal with. You're not seeing it for something that you never wanted to begin with. You just think that it was normal because at one point it was normal. You think that it determines who you are because you keep seeing the same patterns and so you don't see anything else. It's like you, when you go to another country, everything is so different to you because you don't live there. Everything is foreign to you because it's not familiar. So when you uncover these things that were once familiar, you start to see the opposites. You start to know what you want. But again, it comes with time because with time, you're going to heal. You're going to focus on yourself, but again, it requires discipline. It requires knowing that right now you need to do the hard thing to get to the better outcome. But, event, but essentially, you're really setting yourself up for a better life, for better relationships, for better friendships. You're setting yourself up to go to the places that you were supposed to go to begin with, to go to the places that were meant for you to begin with. By not uncovering these things, you don't see what the problem really is. That's why it's like people say to do this because it's so beneficial. And again, some things, you know, that's like not the only thing you uncover. Like that's not the only thing I uncovered. Certain other things did hurt more. It hurts, but you know that it's in your best interest. And you know that when you do the hard work, you reap the benefits. But one thing to keep in mind is that none of it was your fault. None of it had anything to do with you or what you deserve. It does not mean that your future has to look like your past. In fact, that's what you're preventing from happening. You're really preventing that. These patterns, these same occurrences, you're stopping them in their tracks and you're saying, no, there's something wrong here. I need to look at myself and my perception of the world around me and my perception of what I think is acceptable, of what I think I deserve, of what I think is normal to me. Once you do that, chances are you won't even need to learn about how to move on from things because your eyes are opened, because you woke up, and because you know that now what the people that will come into your life, they will be the opposite of whatever has hurt you because you're well aware of what hurt you. And you're well aware that, again, you don't have to sit here and accept it. You don't have to make it okay. You don't have to involve yourself in the situation. You thought that you had to because you didn't know that there was any better for you. And then you will move on and you will see better for yourself everywhere you go because you're not looking in all the wrong places anymore.